Hello again, Craig here from thepreppersstop.com. We're going to be talking about two radiation detectors, personal radiation detectors, that I carry on my website. So this full disclosure here, I, I sell both these units. So judge me as you may by the pluses and minus I tell you about both of these units. The Nuke Alert and the K8 Nuke Safeguard. got upside down there. Nuke Alert and the K8 Nuke Safeguard. Two units we're going to be reviewing here today right now. The Nuke Alert is more popular. I've been, uh, Alex Jones, some other people have been selling these on their website for ages. I've been selling the K8 Nuke Safeguard for about seven, maybe eight years now at my table. I've just recently started carrying the Nuke Alert. Uh, deja vu for some of you who know my, my videos. I'm redoing this video because I want to be a little more fair to both of them now that I've had experience with both of them. Uh, okay, first of all, size-wise. Well, for, let, me, let me start with price. They're both the same price, at least on the prepperstop.com. They're both the same price. $160, $160. I think on some places, if you buy multiples of these, they go down to $145 each. But they're about the same price, $160. Size-wise, as you see, the Nuke Alert is bigger than the K8 Nuke Safeguard. Okay, it's thicker. It's wider. It's taller. It's, about, it's good twice the size. Now, that may not be an issue with you, but I'm just letting you know the size of the, the Nuke Alert is about twice the size. So, that's not a big deal, I suppose. Let's talk about uh, uh, alarm points here. Both of these will alarm at certain levels of radiation. Uh, I'm going to turn this Nuke Alert, I mean, I'm sorry, the K8 Nuke Safeguard on. When I turn it on, I'm going to use a pen here, and on the back here, uh, this is a... So turn it on and listen and watch. Get a little flash and a little beep. It's on now. Okay. So the, the K8 Nuke Safeguard, we can demonstrate this for you. The K8 Nuke Safeguard alarms a starting point at about 5 millirentkins according to the specifications. I find it's a little closer to 10 that it actually starts alarming. And we're going to show you here, uh, first of all, there's a green light. There's, there's three lights. On the left-hand side, you have a green light. On the, on the middle, you have a yellow light. And on the right-hand side, you have a red light. I believe I got that in the correct order. We're going to demonstrate that right now. This is inside of lead pig. I got a piece of gummite. I want you to watch the green light, which should be on the left-hand side, will normally just flash once briefly about every five or ten minutes. Put it up near something hotter, and this is through the lead, by the way. And you watch and see that green light flashes more often. It's starting to detect radiation at about five millirentkins, maybe 10 millirentkins, fairly low levels, okay? And by the way, we're detecting gamma and X-ray with these units, gamma and X-ray. Beta, it won't really detect unless you get a gamma, emit, a particle that's a gamma emitting particle, in which case it, they can start alarming. It's not really for beta, they're meant for gamma radiation. Okay, so the alarm points on the, the K8 Nuke Safeguard is about five to ten millirentkins that's when it starts alarming and we're gonna do the demonstration now with the, the the nuke the nuke alert take the top off the lead pig i'm gonna put the nuke alert right on the top of it here and you hear nothing that's because it needs about 100 millirentkins in order to get this one to alarm so that's about that's a good 10 times the amount of rate at least 10 times the amount of radiation it takes to alarm the nuke alert versus the k8 nuke safeguard about 10 times the amount of radiation needed now, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, frankly, this one here, the, the K8 Nuke Safeguard, see, I wear it. It's got a clip on it. I'll show you that later. It's got a clip on it. I wear it, uh, and I get sometimes people walking by my table that actually alarms it, you know, four or five feet away from me. It starts alarming. Yeah, people, if they've just had a CAT scan or a PET scan where they have a radioactive dye, or they might be wearing the radioactive seed, usually have to get a lot closer for that, but people just walking by my table can get this one alarmed. So it's pretty sensitive. But this one, the, the Nuke Alert, I need about 10, more than 10 times the amount of radiation, maybe up to 20 times the amount of radiation. There's nothing I have on my table that's going to make this alarm. I'm going to need some more radiation than just somebody walking by my table. I've never had one of these go off, go off legitimately. We're going to talk about false alarms later. Uh, now, the, so, again, that's not necessarily bad. Th th this gummite is safe. I, I can handle this gummite, uh, and I, as long as I wash my hands afterwards, I'm fine with this. I, I, I deal with this all weekend when I do shows. So, but I don't have anything strong enough and neither do you at your house to make this one work. You probably don't even have anything strong enough to make this work. You can make this one go off on maybe some radium, 
that doesn't have like a clock that doesn't have the glass on it putting it right up to the radium you might get this one alarm that's about the only thing you're going to be able to buy that will make this alarm or you can get if you're you can get some minerals like this you can get it to alarm as well of course okay let's talk about sound levels as you heard with the k nuke safeguard it's not very loud whereas the nuke alert is not very loud either unfortunately the nuke alert is actually about nine according to specifications about nine decibels quieter than the k8 nuke safeguard uh, if you have this in your pocket you might not even hear it um, whereas well either one of them if you have them in your pocket you might not be able to hear it. but this one which is promoted with a clip for the belt i'm sorry if not for the keys put your keychain on here um if, you, and if you're using it for your keys then you might not even be able to get to hear it whereas this one i usually wear like that and or up on the visor of the car you can actually see the lights even if you don't hear it at night so anyway um not the, neither one are very loud and the nuclear is a little bit quieter okay they both have a tendency now move on to false alarms they both can false alarm i have had them both false alarm the k8 nuke safeguard I can get to alarm maybe right now let's try it here let's uh i got a piece of uranium ore here uh, i'm going to try to make it alarm not because of the uranium because i'm gonna well it's not doing it there i just saw it flash there i can get a false alarm by jarring it sometimes sometimes it takes quite a bit that's a rock by the way uranium ore uh i can get to alarm uh by jarring it that's a false alarm the nuke alert I can get to false alarm in an entirely different way. The, the nuke alert, basically, if I take it from a very cold, from the winter time, going into a heated space, the temperature change can set these off. And vice versa, going in a very hot space to a very cool space can set these off. Doesn't all the time, I'm just saying it can. That's where the nuke alert alarms, false alarms. That's, so they both have false alarm points. Now, with the K8 nuke safeguard, if it false alarms, I can always shut it off and turn it back on to reset it. Whereas the nuke alert has no way to shut it off. It's on all the time. And we're gonna talk about battery life here in a minute. But there's no way to shut off the nuke alert. So I have to live with it for a few minutes. It, it, it'll eventually clear itself and you'll be fine again. So, but the point is they both can false alarm. So with either one of these, don't go running for the hills just because it starts alarming. There might be a, another reason for it, such as a false alarm. Okay, um, breakage. Now, the nuke alert has this keychain loop on it. It's made of plastic. And I have seen people that come to my table saying, those break this, they can break off. Uh, yeah, it's the nature of plastic, you can break it off. It's pretty tough, but you can break it off. Also on the nuke alert, on the back, it has this chart showing levels of radiation that you're measuring. And by the way, uh, also didn't cover this but anyway that can rub off uh, in your pocket that can rub off and so now you have just a blank slate you don't know what you're reading uh, the nuke alert which i'm holding in front of you right now if you'll see it has the number of chirp when this thing starts alarming there's a certain number of chirps you count in series one to ten i think it is i can't see the screen like maybe you can see it it also has on the second column i believe is what it's showing is the levels of radiation you're like that likely is indicating and the third column is indicating if i believe if i'm remembering the chart right is, is indicating the levels, uh, the, the amount of time you can stay out based on the number of chirps you're getting to be safe, to keep it under probably 50 to 100 milliretkins. Uh, 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 I'm sorry, rentkins or it would be rentkins, not milla, it'd be rentkins. 50 to 100 rentkins, I'm not sure what the chart says, it might say 100. So anything under 50 rentkins exposure, you'll have no visible effects, at least not in the near term. But anything between 50 and 200, you will eventually come out with radiation poisoning. However, you will not die from that. You will survive that if you don't get if you get out of the radiation area. But in any, any, any event, uh, what the point is, the nuke alert can tell you how much radiation you're actually encountering by counting the number of chirps. Whereas the K8 nuke safeguard, you cannot tell the, num the levels of radiation you're counting. In other words, it'll start alarming at about 5 to 10 millirankins, but it won't give you an indication of how much radiation you're actually receiving. Okay? So, but they both detect gamma radiation, uh, and they'll, they'll give, this one will give you an indication of how much radiation, this one will not. This will only tell you that there's radiation. This one essentially gives you an indication there's something going on, and you need to maybe investigate. This one will tell you if it's not a false alarm, 
will tell you actually how much radiation you are encountering. So they both can false alarm. Um, talked about breakage, this breaking off, the key, key loop and the chart wearing off the paint. With the K8 Nuke Safeguard, it has this clip to hook up onto your car visor or on the edge of your purse, ladies purse strap or for uh, on your shirt or whatever, this clip, spring-loaded clip. I have not personally seen these break. Uh, I'm sure they can. I just personally have never seen it. Never seen anybody that has complained about the, the, the clip breaking. It's spring-loaded. I've never seen one break, never heard anybody saying that it has broken. But I'm sure it can. And I have seen people saying the belt, the, the, the key loop has broken on the Nuke Alerts before. Uh, one thing the Nuke Alert has going for it, it's waterproof. There's no switches, so you can, it's waterproof. Whereas the K8 Nuke Safeguard is not waterproof. However, I'll tell you that one time, actually, you know, when I have it clipped on here and it's so small and lightweight that I don't notice it's there, this weighs less than an ounce. Both of these weigh less than an ounce. And it went through the washer one time. Uh, and I fully expected it wouldn't work, and I, I was wrong. It actually worked after it got washed. Full load in the cycle of the washer. It actually worked. Your results may vary. This is not designed to get wet. I'm just saying that I did that once, and it survived. It actually worked. However, the glue inside uh, that's gluing the unit in there was the glue had no longer functioned, so I had I have to re-glue it. it. The glue released itself because there's the, the circuit board and everything that's glued in there. Now, these are both... Uh, computerized. Uh, I don't expect, even though they both are, are EMP protected to a certain military spec, uh, I don't make any promises. It really depends on how, what type of EMP it is and how intense it is. These supposedly are both EMP protected. I don't know how, if they would really survive it though. They both basically have computer chips inside. So whether or not they will stand an EMP, your guess is good at mine. There's so much theory behind that. Nobody has really good testing on it. But they are, they do have mil, mil specs EMP protection. Uh, so waterproof. Now battery life. The the Nuke Alert, and, and by the way, it's a 10-year guarantee, 10-year warranty, and 10-year life on the battery. Stated 10 years. Talking to the designers of this, that they say it'll probably last more like 15. It depends on how much it actually alarms. The K8 Nuke Safeguard, uh, the battery lasts about three months continuously on. Three months only. It's a 2032 battery. It's a pretty big battery. The battery actually takes about one fourth of the space. It's about as wide as the unit and it's about half the thickness. So it's a big battery. It's a, it's a big button battery. Lasts about three months full on. And that if you're gonna, if it's alarms a lot, then it's gonna last less time. So 10 year minimum battery life on the, the Nuke Alert, three month on the K8 Nuke Safeguard. Now the difference here is the K8 Nuke Safeguard, you can shut off. And so the battery life could be very much as, mu as long as you want it to be depending how much time you have it on and how long it alarms. And you can easily replace yourself because there's two screws on the back. There you can see them. You can replace the battery yourself with a small Phillips screwdriver. Very easy to do. I've done it many times. And you can buy those batteries anywhere for like a dollar or whatever. Very low price. The Nuke Alert, uh, you have to send back to the factory. If the bat when the battery finally does die, you have to send it back to the factory and they have to break open the case and, and, they, and I think they give you a new unit or else they break it open and give you a new case because it could be worn off the paint. They'll, they'll work with you on that. Um, uh, but, but anyway, the battery lasts guaranteed for 10 years. The battery to replace that, I believe it's the present charge is $50. So do the math, figure out which one's better, whether $50 every 10 or 15 years versus a dollar every three months or however long you want it to last because you can turn it off. Remember, you can't turn off the nuclear. So that's about it. Um, they're both $160. Oh, 10 year warranty I mentioned, one year warranty from the manufacturer. So I'm trying to be fully fair about both of, the, both of these on every aspect of them. So thanks, uh, comments below, you can talk about them. Thanks for watching. My name is Craig. Again, the website is thepreppersstop.com. So long.